Hello, and welcome to episode 50 of Anime Territory. Okay, I thought you were giving me a signal. <laughs> I am your host this week, Benjamin Shabby, and with me as always is my co-host, Johnny Lawman Pudding Ruha. What are you saying about me? What? That you saying like... I'm, I, I'm, I'm a spineless pudding man? Sure, let's go with that. Alright, accurate. <laughs> Uh, this week, we are doing our winter anime impressions. Yep. Yeah. We watched a bunch of currently airing animes. We'll, go, we'll talk about them. And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. We, we might try to like pick this back up. Maybe you know a couple episodes from now, we'll, we'll give a mid-season uh, impressions or late-season impressions. Who knows? If it's good enough, we might just do a whole show on one show. If not, we'll just... Bunch them all together. Yeah. Typically what we do is we, we, the shows we actually finish, we would do a whole show on, but who knows what we'll do. It's hard to say. Uh, So we're going to do six of them? I guess. Okay. Four of them that we watched together, two of them that I just watched. Because one was the second season, the other, uh, they're both second seasons. Yeah, they're both second seasons. But I really, really want one of them to be covered on the show eventually, the first season. So... Maybe we'll cover both seasons when season two is done. That's an idea. All right. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, where do you want to start? Uh, uh, you're hosting, man. All right. Well, we're just going to go with how I have it written down then. That works for me. All right. First show is Tomo Chan is a Girl. Yep. Uh... What? <laughs> what? Since when? <laughs> This is probably of the f- four shows we watched together. This is probably my second most anticipated. Technically, one of them was a season two, yeah. So it feels hard counting that, um, especially since I've also been keeping up with the manga. So like, I know all the plot points that can happen. I don't know which plot points they'll get to, but I know which plot points can happen oh. in that one. Uh, but Tomo Chan as a girl is of the new shows we're watching, the one I am most anticipating. Well, that about. one had the like most. Well, not I guess the other one had a pretty outrageous synopsis, but this one was just like. So this guy thinks this girl is a guy. Well, well, the synopsis <laughs> is the the setup. I should say not synopsis, but the okay. setup is Tomo Chan has feelings for like her best friend since childhood. Yes. His name is Junichiro something. Yeah, I, just I didn't Junichiro. write down his last name. <laughs> Who cares? But, Doesn't matter. Uh, and she like confesses to him, like up front, right away <laughs> in high school. And he's like, "I love you too, best bud." And it's like, "Okay, okay." And he just treats her like another guy, you mm-hmm. know, like a a friendship sort of love. And then it's her struggling to both struggling to act more like a girl and be seen as a girl. Mm-hmm. But you know, she still is like. Uh, very tomboyish. Yes. Um, I mean, that's that's the general setup. We've got some other fun characters. We've got... Um, well, Tomo. Her, her full name character. is Tomo Aizawa. Yes. We've got her best friend, and the, also a childhood friend of both of them, Misuzu Gundo. Okay. Uh, Who is the great. best. <laughs> she's, she's just this cold, manipulative person... <laughs> That I I think genuinely cares for her friends. Yes. But has a very antagonistic relationship with Junichiro. Well, she's also just trying to, like, get them, I guess, to... Yeah, she's trying to get them to just, like, quit being idiots and, like, okay, come on. Quit faffing about and just get on with it. Yeah, we we both... (laughs) I know what both of you feel like, so just just get on with it, all right? Quit hiding. Mm -hmm. Um, We meet another character named Misaki Kosuke who is in the men's karate club, which Tomo is in the men's karate club <laughs> she's because stupid. she can beat everybody, both male and female, in the karate club. So she's yeah. in the more competitive one. Um, Junichiro sees a picture of him and mistakes him for a girl. He's like, oh, good. <laughs> she made a friend in the karate club who's a girl. Good deal. Uh, Later finds out she's a dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dude. Uh, and then we've got Carol Olsten, 
who is uh, made of porcelain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she uh, likes or is engaged to Misaki Kosuke. Yeah. And doesn't like how much time Tomo is spending with him. She asks Gundo for advice and Gundo's like, if you want to take down Tomo, yeah, just, just spend you. some time with Junichiro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Junichiro, this girl approaches him. And she's like, I was, t I've got an enemy and I was told that you could help with that. And he's like, okay, you want me to train you? Got it. <laughs> Cause he's, he's not in the karate club, but he does karate at their, um. At Tomo's dad's dojo. Yeah. And they constantly like fight there. Um, but and, uh, she's like, she can't do a single push up yeah. or pull up or sit up, which to be fair, can't I can't run. do a pull up. Uh, she can't run. <laughs> She gives up after like 10 feet of running. Yeah. She's like, I can jump rope because I like rabbits. Um, but then like immediately like Tomo walks in. To Tomo walks in on them and she's like, what are you doing? Why are you spending time with Shinichiro? And Carol is like, oh, oh I get it. <laughs> she's I like, Tomo, see. you're not my enemy anymore. Because <laughs> she was just like... <laughs> She was just calling her stupid and saying she was her enemy. And it's like, what did I do to this girl? Why does she not like me? And she's like, oh, I get it. This is why Gundo told me to spend time with Junichiro. So I, I would figure this out pretty quickly. Yes. Um, the, I mean, uh, some of my other notes here. We get umbrella sharing in the first episode. So I'm on board for that. Oh, yeah. A well-known like of mine. Uh, my one complaint is the episodes just don't give me enough. I want to be able to watch all of this right now, and I can't. Okay. Uh, I'm fine with it being episodic like this. It's just, it's just I'm like, ah, this is getting good. And then it's like, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll wait a week. I'd say... See where it goes next, instead of just knowing where it goes next. It starts off a little rocky for me, because it's just like, okay, is this guy going to be, like, totally oblivious and, like, be a kind of annoying? Yeah, is it going to be... You, is the pick going to wear off? You're like, okay, there's... There's a, what do you call that? A connect, not maybe not connection, but chemistry. Like, Chemist, no, chemistry is with the other two. Yeah. Okay. We can talk about that in a moment. But uh, no, he also has some feelings for Tomo. We don't yeah, know. There's a the, mutual attraction. Yes. We don't know to what extent, but there's there's something there. He's, he's very protective of her. Like, there's a scene where they're in a crowded train and like somebody is like groping her. Yeah. And she doesn't. She's like, what do I do? I don't want... I'm right in front of my friend. I don't want him to to think of me like that or to, to think that somebody would do mm -hmm. that to me. But Junichiro figures it out and, like, reports the guy to the police. It's like, good. Yes. That is what should happen to train groupers. They should be, be reported to the police. There's also know. another scene where you get the sense, like, oh, okay, there, there is something here. Yeah. He's not just, like, actually... Well, when he finds out that Misaki Kosuke is um, a guy, he's just like, he just becomes Super, antagonistic yes. towards him. Um, that, that, true. that too. So yeah, yeah again, the, 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 initially I'm just like, okay, I don't I, I don't like where this is going if he's going to be like this. And then you get that. You're like, okay, I'm in. I'm in now. So I'm, I'm going to reveal something to you that I think might throw you off the... Um, now, now that now that you're now that I know that you like it, you're hooked yeah. or whatnot. Uh, yeah, something, something that I I hid from you when I found out about it, just because it might uh, throw you off after we watch like the first episode or something. This is based off of a four panel, like gag manga. Oh, okay. so which we covered another show that was like that. Um, what was that show? Let's see. It wasn't it the school one, is it? Yeah, it was the school one. What do you call that? The Baka and Test? No, it wasn't Baka and Test. Yakuin Domo, something like that. Yakuin Domo. What was it about? Uh, he's starting. He's going to a school that used to be all girls. Oh and yeah, he's yeah, forced yeah, yeah. Into the student yeah, council. We were just on that page, I think. One more. That's Sankarea. No, one more. Okay. It's that one, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Setokai Yakuin Domo. Yeah. You said one more like three times. <laughs> well, it was right there. Okay. Setokai Yakuin Domo. Okay. Which, I think, again, as we watched it, it got better. But it's just like, okay, there's a lot of, like, 
an episode is like ten six yeah. six bits that they're doing or whatnot. Mm-hmm. You know, so that can be that can be rough sometimes yeah, when you're I looking didn't, for I didn't a more get that story. pace in this show. I, I think I I felt it more in the first episode than I okay. did in the other two. Um, but it's just like, oh, okay. Well, this is this is clearly progressing. So it's I not just could definitely tell with the other show, but this one I couldn't tell. Yeah. So I didn't want to like reveal that to you okay. and turn you off from it. That's um, cool. But now now that I know, it's like, okay, this is this is picking up. This is not going to be treated the same way. Which I like that other show. It's just, it's definitely a style that. It's like, I want more narrative. Then it's just too quick for me. Yeah. yeah. It's like, we need to slow down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to revise an earlier statement of mine. This would be my third most anticipated from what we're covering today. Okay. Um, but one of them is one that you haven't seen. Okay. That You probably know which one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I'm dancing around it. We'll reveal it eventually. It'll be in the episode description what shows we're covering. Yes. Uh, okay, so do you have any other notes? Because I have a couple. Um, the episodes don't give me enough. Carol is made of porcelain. Oh, I've got Misuzu Gundo. My note is I like her. <laughs> yeah, she's great. She's the best. <laughs> do we want to talk about the the elephant in the room when it comes to those two characters? Yes. Okay. So I wrote down in episode two. Why am I shipping Gunzo in June? Gundo. Gundo. Yeah, Gundo. I'm just like, there's something there. They got something. There, there is a chemistry yes. there. there. There is a dynamic there that even though it's antagonistic, you can tell it comes from something. There's a spark. You're just yeah, like, there, there's... what is this? Why isn't this happening? And then, very last part of episode two, which I guess is spoiler, but it's... Yeah, we're episodes, spoiling right? the first three episodes, and I guess probably the fourth episode of one of these shows. But whatever. They dated in middle school. And I'm just like, what? Yeah, you learn that at the end of episode two, and you're like, this makes so much more sense. Yes. Like this, this is why there's some sort of, like, like I, I can feel, like, a tension here. Yes. A chemistry. But they're so antagonistic against each other. It's like, okay, they used to date in middle school. This is starting to make sense that there might be some unresolved tension there, but also some bitter feelings towards each other. Uh, though I feel like episode three ruins that a little bit because <laughs> they're like it was for like three, three days. days and it's like June what? made him like bike 20 kilometers <laughs> and then broke up with her <laughs> they broke up with her like two days later it's just like she's like you ruined me because you broke up with me <laughs> what they both wanted to break uh, up yeah. um but it's just she's more just like he beat me to it yeah <laughs> that's that's what made her mad is that's like, what, he beat that's me what she's mad and it's just like I, th- I thought there would be like okay it was more of a t- there there was more drama I thought there would be yeah. more drama about it though I, I think like Gundo implies like you know you weren't hanging out with Tomo Chan in middle school during this time and then like right after our breakup you started hanging out with her again more mm-hmm. and it's just like did he like realize something? Was there some argument that they had? Because they're constantly arguing, oh, yeah. Tomo and Jinitro, and then having to make up. And when I say arguing, I also mean physically attacking each other. Oh yeah, I don't know how they're not like expelled from school. <laughs> they're like punching each other every day. Well, to be fair, Tomo starts it. Yeah, and I know. I'm just saying, like, there are. It's not. Doesn't mean I'm not excusing her actions. I should make okay. this clear not excusing her actions what i'm saying is there are stereotypes in japan and in america where you would see a woman you know hitting a guy and you would think oh that's just yeah whatever um so she wouldn't be caught up in you know like oh that's just them whatever even even if it's wrong mm-hmm. um and then the guy is just defending himself so Whatever. If he had started, it'd be a much different story, a much different tone, and people would take it a lot differently, which, again, is a problem, but mm-hmm. that's can't explain these things. What's the difference between hitting somebody on the shoulder and just flat out KOing them? <laughs> yeah. Now, part of why I think it's okay in this show is because they are both used to training in Tomo's dojo where they are fighting each other, okay. and they're not necessarily causing serious damage. It's more just like... 
He's wearing a bandage every day. <laughs> it's true. I think that's played for comical effect. But uh, it's 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 something we gotta address. It's whatever. It's a problem. Physical violence is. Don't do that in the real world, please. Yeah. And it's played for last in anime, and it's. I just kind of got to look it over sometimes. It's like, like, okay, well, they're karate people. They're used to sparring or whatever. And apparently the rules at her dojo are pretty lax as far as like what's allowed. Because <laughs> Tomo was like, I've never been able to beat June. And then June is like, if we were in an actual karate match, Tomo would win. Yes. The only reason I went in her dojo is... Because I'm a man and I'm physically stronger than her, and it comes down to just like an actual fight. Mm-hmm. If it were skill based purely, she would win. Yes. Uh, so that's just like okay. So, so they're pretty lax on the rules there. Um, Anyways, the only other note I have is the Shaggy Girls. The Shaggy Girls. The girls who are just like like what's up? Okay. <laughs> so, so that's. You go Shaggy and not Valley Girl when you hear like. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Oh, yeah. I totally you just go straight to Shaggy. Yeah. There are girl. Do they like think that. They have like a crush on what's the. Misaki? Yeah, Misaki. And they see him hanging out with Tomo. Tomo, Tomo a lot. And they get like jealous of Tomo. Yeah. And like kind of confront her. And she's like, you want to fight? All right, let's go. <laughs> and they're like, wait, what? And then they're just like, Tomo's kind of hot. <laughs> she is, uh... It's like, wait, that's a girl? I'm kind of attracted to her. Like, they run into her, the next episode, they run into her in casual clothes and she's just wearing men's clothing. They're like, that's not fair! She can totally pull it off! <laughs> she's toying with my emotions. I know you're a girl. Quit making me think you're a hot man. You're making me feel things. I'm just reminded of that uh, the episode of Futurama where they join the army and war is declared, but Leela's not allowed to join the army because she's a woman, so she pretends to be a man, and uh, Zat Brannigan is attracted to her, and he when he learns that it's uh, you know it's Leela and he's a woman, he's like, oh thank God, <laughs> all these emotions <laughs> suddenly make sense. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I mean, is that is that all we're going to say about Tomo Chan as a girl? It's good. Yeah, Go watch it. It's good. We're going to keep watching it. Yeah. Um, hopefully it stays good. Hopefully. All right. Next up. The next show we watched is Don't Toy With Me, Not a Toro. Season Second two. Attack. Season two. This is the one I thought when I originally said this was my most anticipated. I was thinking of this, but I would say this is now my second most anticipated. Now that I remembered, oh yeah, there's a show I'm watching that we're talking about that you haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been reading the Nagatoro manga. Mm-hmm. I'm hooked. Yeah. I'm sold. Yeah, uh, it's it's more the same. To get into some storylines that I remember liking in the manga. Um, yeah, it's basically the same as the last season. I would say, but a little st- bit more. It, we're past the problem with the last season problem i say mm-hmm. is that it was hard to get past the first couple of episodes yes uh whereas this is like okay yeah we're, but we're past that point we're at the same point where it's just like oh yeah they sort of like each other and it's more teasing than bullying yes um senpai is slowly like uh, there, there's a thing in the manga community where they call him chad pie because <laughs> he keeps being a chad and being like uh in a good way Okay. Like a, like there was a meme on the subreddit where, um, well, from the most recent episode, the fourth episode, where they're like, well, what is it, senpai? Do you want to know my cup size or my thigh size? And then he's just depicted manly. as like, I want to know your name. <laughs> okay. So it's just like, he just keeps making moves that are like, yes, become more confident person. Be more... Uh, you know, don't. I guess he's not. D- don't don't do what bad manga writers would do, and have your character go back to square one and be, you know, an actual pervert. You know, an, an actual pervert, or like oh, I can't, I can't think about that. That's too shy. It's like no, he's 
making steps to improve himself and making yeah. steps to acknowledge things about uh, about Nagatoro and his relationship to her. And it's just like, yes, yes, keep this up. He's he's building momentum. You got this. Yes, it's gonna take four years, but you got this. <laughs> Sorry, four seasons. I would say with where the manga is now. They're not going to catch up to it in the second season, but they might catch up to the, where the manga is now in the third season. Okay. And I would say the the manga's probably... It's hard to say. It's mm-hmm. I would say it's coming to a climax, but I don't know if it's then going to transition into a different type of show, if that makes sense. Okay. I don't want to say any spoilers too far, but... So you... It, kind of it, saying... it might be reaching a natural endpoint soon, but they could take that natural endpoint and go a new direction if they okay. wanted to. I got you. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and I would say, I would think, probably not going to get to that in season two unless they really rush things, which I don't want them to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but they would probably be able to do the show in three seasons if the manga ends soon. soon. But it might not end soon. Yeah. I don't know. Might go in a completely different direction. What if Senpai was the teaser? <laughs> what if there were two of them? <laughs> there were two Senpais or two Nagatoros? Yes. Or two Presidents? Ooh. Dude, the President's weird. That's yes. one of my notes. She's a dang ass freak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a dang ass freak. <laughs> what was it? The school oh, marathon she mar- ran in a yeah. buddy suit. It's like, it's performance art. <laughs> to like... Represent the something of the male gaze or something. I don't know. They might have gone into it, but I don't remember. But it's just like, why are you doing this? She's doing it as performance art. He's just here. weird. He is weird. Uh, and I like it. So, uh, a little bit of plot. The first episode, they do a how to greet your friend. It's like... Senpai sees Nagatoro, like, on the street walking to school. He's like, I don't know how to approach her. So he just kind of creeps on her a little bit accidentally. And, like, Nagatoro sees him. And then she goes, like, oh, this is how you're supposed to greet your friends. And then stuff happens. Yeah. Slap on the back, say, sup, senpai, or poke him on the forehead, or kick him in the shins. (laughs) Or, like, hug him from behind. Yeah. And he's thinking about doing that. But he's just like, oh, no, I can grab her breast by accident or something. Yeah, it's like, ah, I, I wouldn't want hug her from behind. I'm not that bold. Yeah. And then it accidentally happens somehow. I can't remember I think why. he trips. Yeah. Uh, and, and then they run into their friends and they're like, nothing was happening. <laughs> nope, nothing. <laughs> um, after that, he has to put on her tights. Yeah. And then she called it like a fetish. And I said, I wrote down in my notes, is it a fetish if 80% of the population finds it attractive? <laughs> Yes? I would say no. I think a fetish has to be more niche. Okay, so you think there has to be a nicheness. I, I, I think it's, at some point, if enough people find it attractive, it's no longer a fetish. Okay. It's just the, considered... The norm. The normal human attraction. Okay. It's and like then... a, a straight male that's attracted to big boobs. I wouldn't call that a fetish. I would call that pretty typical. Okay. I got you. Now that doesn't mean you can't. That doesn't mean there are people out there that aren't. You know, it doesn't mean there are people out there that are not attracted to big boobs. But the, it's it, the norm. You, you hear that, you're like, okay, <laughs> like whatever, man. That's not like a secret you have to hide. Uh, yeah, I guess your people aren't really hiding that fact a lot of times. It's like, yes. I don't know. I don't actually know the exact definition of fetish, and I'm not going to look it up. So. Uh, my phone's in the other room. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, my computer's right here, but it's recording, and I don't want to touch it in case I break something. I just want to look it up. <laughs> that's, that's true, too. Uh, okay, but then, yeah, so he's trying to put on her tights. She's trying to, like, tease him, I guess, but then he gets a little too close, and then she, like, snap. What, what happens exactly? So he's just, like, trying to, like, He's like thinking of baseball. He's he's doing the trope where it's like, yeah. don't, don't get a boner. Think about baseball. Bugs. <laughs> Whatever. I know the bugs have boobs. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but 
And then he's just like, he just gets a little too far up her leg with the tight. And then she's like, ah, <laughs> red light, stop. Um, and then squeezes his hand with her thighs. And I am so like, lucky bastard, lucky bastard. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't write that down. Uh, last thing they do is they go to a sushi bar. He goes with like all of her friends. Yeah, it's and sort then... of like a after after the culture festival, which is the end of season one. Yeah, party like you know treat you to sushi or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So and then he's like seated right by the sushi bar that has like the conveyor belt thing. And, and he's like, "This is a trap. They I'm just brought me so that I could grab all the stuff. I don't have time to eat my myself." And then. I, th- I think Nagatoro realizes it and reaches over him to grab something mm-hmm. to kind of be like, hey, you're the star. You, it's because of you or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then everybody's like, here, have right. some of my this. Try this weird concoction I made. I'm just like, I don't know what any of this is. It's, it's, it's salmon roe and salmon sashimi or something like that. Yeah. And it's like, double salmon. And it's like, it makes sense. They taste together. They're the same food. <laughs> it's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't like sushi because I'm a and then, like Nagatora kind of feels left out, so she tries like this one thing. It's like, yeah, it's like a male and a female thing. And then yeah, like, you're gonna get they're gonna get pregnant in your tummy when you eat it, and they're like, "That's a crash joke. Why would you do that? Don't, don't joke about food like that." <laughs> and then, and then he Somebody's they're, they're like, more just like too far. Yeah, Come and on, then man. he eats it, and he's like, Breathe. "Oh, it's good actually." And they're like, "Okay." <laughs> I see. He saved her face. Good job, man. Episode two, they go to the zoo. Yeah. Every guy's dream to go to the zoo. I don't care that much about zoos. Well, then, most people's. I haven't been to the zoo since I was really small. I'm sure I'd appreciate it. I'd like to go to a zoo again just to see what it's like as an adult, but there's not a strong inclination to be like, I fucking love zoos. I got to go to the zoo. I love zoos. I just like walking around. Uh, But yeah, he gets two tickets from the President President of the Art Club, and it's like, I don't know if they said this in the anime, but in the manga, she was very much like, if this girl's going to be hanging around the art club, she's got to go do some art club activities. Okay. Here, I've got two tickets to the zoo. Go sketch. <laughs> Take her to go sketching. She's got If she's going to be hanging around the art club, she's going to be doing art. I don't think they imply that in the show. Okay. It's definitely a thing in the manga. And I feel like, like, oh, I'm taking an art class, so I might as well get some practice. Well, um... I, th- I think it was very, very light. I mean, it was probably light in the manga, too. But I thought the president was more like, hey, I know this girl. Let's just bring her, you know? Yeah. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Go, go sketch at the zoo. Bring this girl. Yeah. Uh, but she she did explicitly say it was for, like, sketching. So, like, yeah. that came from her. It's mm-hmm. like, bring Nagatoro and both of you sketch. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like in the manga, and maybe it was just a translation thing, where mm-hmm. they were like, yeah, she should be. If she's in the art club, she should be doing art. Um, but they go around. They start sketching animals. Uh, they're like taking a break, eating some food. She goes to the bathroom, and then some some no eyed people from season one of them from season one that uh, it's like hitting on Nagatoro or something. Yeah, like yeah, hitting on her at yeah. one point, and she was not interested in. Um, recognize the senpai from when he like came in and said hey let's walk home together to save him from the mm-hmm. unwanted advances and it's just like uh they see the artwork and they commend senpai for his but then they make fun of the elephant uh, um it's like all right and then senpai is like don't make fun of people that are trying mm-hmm. like uh, who cares if it's beginner you know like don't don't mock somebody for putting their all into something mm-hmm. And then we learn that Nagatora overheard that. And then she's just like, you got something to say about my art? <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, no, it's good. <laughs> great, yeah. Please don't kill us. <laughs> or do. <laughs> if it were me, I'd be, sorry, if it were you, you would be like, yes, kill me, please. No, I'd say kick me three times, please. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, did, is that, did we talk about that in an earlier episode? That that's your yeah. superpower? You can take three kicks from somebody? Yeah, we've talked about it on the podcast. Before. Okay. That's my I superpower. Just, I can take three kicks. We don't have that many listeners, so anybody that might accidentally you leave like the autoplay on and listen to this. Yeah. So, so new listeners, I have a superpower. I can take three kicks. Like, no pain. 
But after the third kick, I die. Okay, okay. I, I, I need to clarify something here. No pain when you take the kick? No, I can take it. But no, like, I know you can take it, but no pain? Not really, no. Well, what's the point of I getting feel... kicked? Oh, that's true. I feel a little pain. <laughs> okay. No, like, broken bones or anything, but it's like, ooh, ow. Yeah, oh, no, no ow. damage. Oh, ow. No damage. That hurt. But, but the pain is there. Other, otherwise, otherwise, what's the point? There's no feeling to that's it. That's true. Okay. So We've there's got, pain. I'm glad we clarified there, there, There's this. no, like, damage or anything. <laughs> we should also know you've never tested this superpower. No, we're just assuming I have it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you've been diagnosed with it. Yes. Okay. Self-diagnosed. Self-diagnosed. I, could be I looked that. it up on WebMD. <laughs> sure you did. Okay. All right, back I've, to the plot. I've got a note here. Nagatoro's drawings are better than either of our drawings. Oh, yeah, I can't draw like that. I suck. I can barely draw stick people. Uh, yeah, I, I, if I put a lot of time, I can do a very crude drawing. I feel like I am... I could be okay if I, like, had the picture and I had to, like, try to copy it. Yeah. But, like, any, like, freelance hand drawing things. My, my it's hand, like... it's also just, like, I can't draw a straight line. Yeah, that's true. Or, or like, a curved line. My I just wiggle too much. Um, but, so it's just, like, I and I've, I've been able to do some okay, like, I can get more out. I'm not saying okay, because they're not okay. Yeah. I can get acceptable for me drawings if I put a lot of time and eraser and like looking at something and trying to to do it. I, I can get a higher level if I put the time into it. Okay. But it's not. It's like going from like level zero to level one. I'm a pretty good colorer. <laughs> I do have a coloring book. I only draw outside the lines a couple times. <laughs> I do have a coloring book here. I got a Dragon Quest coloring book I bought for myself. I like coloring sometimes. <laughs> do you ever get those adult coloring books? Oh no, that's too. Yeah, that's too interesting. I got my, one of my sister in laws. I picked like the simplest one. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> give me some flowers. Uh, no, I uh, the when I want to express myself artistically i have my mom draw something on a piece of wood and then i trace over it with a wood burner that's yeah. what i do uh, that's that's how i get my art kicks art kicks um that's that's episode, oh and then yeah, and eventually is... they're like uh, senpai at the end of episode two senpai okay. is like we should draw your favorite animal mm -hmm. and then nagatoro is like go and draw Let's go to the sloth. Yeah. And then uh, she's standing really far back from the sloths and is telling somebody, go, go draw them. I'll be back here. And then um, when you, then when it's revealed that Nagatoro has been drawing, she's been drawing senpai drawing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, my favorite sloth, the five-toed sloth. And it's like, senpai is your favorite animal, you say. Ooh. Interesting. There is also in this scene, in the some somewhere in the zoo scene, there is there's a background joke that the people on the subreddit picked up on that was not in the manga, that is pretty demented. <laughs> what is it? Um, so we're gonna go. This is gonna be not safe for work. At this not, point, right? Oh, here. okay. Uh, the the writer artist of um Nagatoro before he did Nagatoro or like maybe after he did the original webcomic but before he did the manga drew a, a a sexual doujinshi manga that involved a gorilla oh okay and in the background you can see like I think it might be when they're talking about their favorite animals you can see behind Nagatoro there's like posters of a gorilla Okay. And people on the suburb are like, those those sons of bitches. So it's the gorilla from the whatever he drew. Yeah, I have not oh, read. Do. I have not read that comic. I refuse to. Okay, sure. <laughs> I do, okay. but I know of its existence. Sure. And it's like that's kind of fucked up. All right, I read the first book. That's it. But that's it. <laughs> I didn't read any of it. I'm sticking to that. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. All right, we'll see uh, if it holds up in the law. <laughs> 
but it's just like that that they that I saw a side by side comparison. You know, yep, that was those were not posters in the background. That was just a chain link fence. They added that. And it's I just I wanted to mention it. Okay. Because we're an anime podcast, and if there were Nagatoro fans out there, they might be like, these guys don't know anything about Nagatoro. They didn't even pick up the gorilla joke that they made. All right. I don't know really anything about Nagatoro. That's fine. That's what I'm here. Yeah. I'm on the subreddit. That's what you do. I'm just here to whatever. <laughs> You're just here. I'm just here so this isn't a solo podcast. It'd be, yeah, exactly. It'd be a lot less interesting if it was just me talking. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> It's not, it's not, and that's saying something with how, with how uninteresting this podcast is now. Alright, talking about uninteresting stuff. Uh, episode three is, uh, Senpai gets trapped in the closet. Yeah, he does. Was it? Nagatora leaves her phone at the art club. He goes to try to give it to her. He realizes he doesn't know her first name when somebody's <laughs> like, ah, Nagatoro, do you know her first name? And he's like, uh, uh I, uh, something Hi-a-chi? Hi-a-chi? it's like oh okay, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah yeah she's in that class uh he's going he sees her friends and he's like in the I hallway i don't, don't want to deal with them and then he starts going another direction in the hallway and then he hears more of her friends like i don't want to deal with them so he ducks into a classroom and then realizes that they're coming into the classroom so he hides in like a locker closet yeah. thing and then Nor- nagatora walks in girls start talking they basically ask Nagatora if, like, what kind of guy she likes. Yeah. And she's like, somebody I like hanging out with, I guess, when pressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, oh, but she hangs out with me all the time. What does this mean? And, and then he's just noise. like, he just makes like a yeah. noise in the closet. And they're like, it's, it's a ghost. ghost. <laughs> Nagatora goes to check it out and sees Senpai there. And she's like, you better explain yourself. I don't know if that picked up in the mic. <laughs> Uh, and Senpai goes, uh, phone? <laughs> he doesn't say anything. Yeah. He just gives the hands on the phone. He's like, oh, you brought this for me. Okay. Uh, this does not look good. He's like, it just, he's like, what are you doing here? He's like, it just sort of ended up happening. <laughs> and she's like, look, it's Sakura's guardian spirit. Because <laughs> they were talking about yeah. that earlier. And Sakura's like, and she was a courtesan, you know? <laughs> look, I'll look out the window. And then she gets him out of there. Um, what happens after that? Marathon. Marathon. Okay. That's when we see the president uh, running as a rabbit. Senpai, like, twisted his ankle the night before. before. But he's like, it seems okay now, but he's just going slow and steady. Mm-hmm. Um, like Dagatora and her friends are, like, trying to push him along. It's like, you're the turtle. We're going to give you a booster so you can beat that hair. Mm-hmm. And then they get separated from her other friends. It's just those two. And then his knee starts, or his ankle, ankle. starts hurting. He, like, twists it again. Yeah. Um, Dr. Toro gives him a piggyback ride. And then it lasts for a little bit. And then he realizes that she's struggling. He's like, no, let me go. She's like, I got this. She's like, I don't want to see you get hurt. Yes. It's like, it's not worth it if you get hurt. Like, thank you, but no, thank you. Um, and then by that point, the friends have caught up. And so they do... Something they do in like J- Japanese sports festivals, which I think is called like the ca- the cavalry battle, where it's like four people holding mm-hmm. up one person, um, and then they're able to catch up. Yeah, the president. We we cut to the president being like, "Ah, yes, the cat, meaning Nagatoro and her friends. Uh, <laughs> they disappointed me. They were nothing to begin with, and then they see him come up. Uh, they get a slipstream." And she, she starts going faster. And they're like, switch modes. Yoshi, go up in front. Block the wind. Get, so we can draft off of you. And then as they as they pass her, uh, a teacher blows a whistle. And is like, yeah, you're disqualified for that. And hey, Sipai's like, that's fair. <laughs> and then the uh, president beats them. Yes. But uh, that's not what it was about. Um, does anything else happen in that episode? Not really. Okay. Episode three, Senpai is like, she mad at me? She hasn't shown up the past couple of days for, maybe she's mad at me for the locker incident. Uh, runs into the friends in the hallway and musters up the courage to ask them, like, hey, where's Nagatoro? And they're like, 
Are you worried about her? Here, take this. <laughs> She's been sick. Take She's been sick for two days. <laughs> you can take it. You know where she lives, right? Like, uh, yeah. It's like, okay, here you go. <laughs> Wait, how do you know that? They didn't ask that. I don't think they asked that. I don't think they asked, how do you know? He shows up at her house. Um, nobody answers the door. Nobody answers the door. The gate's open, though. Yes. So um, nobody answers the bell. Whatever. Yeah. It's whatever. He's able to go into the gate, and he's like, maybe she's collapsed. And so I can... Uh, sneaks a peek in the window. And he yeah. gets caught by somebody we don't know. Yes. Uh, but then we do learn that it's his... <laughs> do we get... Do we learn that this episode? That episode I think three? so. Because she like says her name, and she he's like, "Oh, that's her big, that's her big sister." Yeah, because uh, he's just like, "No, please don't call the police." I'm from school. Here's her homework and a gift that I bought. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, you're senpai kun, right?" He's like, "Yes, probably." I think... <laughs> and they're like, oh, "Okay, so you came to see my little sister, gotcha." And he's like, "Ah, oh, okay." There, there had to be something else that happened in episode three, because that's the end of episode three. Yeah, no, that was it. That's like that would take like ten minutes of time. There's something else that happened. They did a lot of closet stuff. I don't know what to tell you. That was it. It was the closet, the marathon, and the, then the end. I thought the closet and the marathon were episode two. I don't think so. Well, whatever. I'm sure we're missing something. What was episode two then? I don't remember. I don't have it written by episode. I just got points. Okay. I think the episode two was. Oh, episode two. Just, episode, episode, episode two, two was, was the, the zoo. zoo. Yeah, okay. I think that was like all episode two. Okay. Okay, that's right. I'm like, I'm like, I know that's how we end episode three, but I feel like we just started talking about episode three. It doesn't seem right. Um, but okay, okay, now I'm back on track. Um, and then episode four, he's invited in. Nagatoro's sleeping. She comes out to see her sister. She's all disheveled. Yeah, disheveled from taking a nap in her pajamas. And then um, realizes that Senpai is there and is... Uh, mad at her sister for letting him in, I guess, and not telling her. Um, was that, he's like, I texted you. It's like, I was asleep. She runs away. She does her hair, okay. changes her clothes, I think. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, they eat pudding. Yeah. His senpai brought pudding, but also the sister. And what was it? It was... Why did she tempt them with the extra... Like She adds a bunch of shit to the pudding. Why did she tempt them with the pudding. I don't know. Can't remember. Like, I think it was just try to get her to talk, I think. Yeah, it was probably just like, Senpai should be going. Dr. was like, Senpai should be leaving now, I think. Yeah. And then it's like, no, 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 we should share the pudding. It's like, I don't know. It's like, oh, but what if I add this Fruits fresh fruit and, and ice cream, cream and whipped cream? And I just have a note. Is that, is that a thing? You add pudding and fruit together? Do you add pudding and ice cream together? To be honest, it didn't look appetizing to me, but I don't like fruit that much. So. Yeah, I don't like fruit that much. I also don't like whipped cream. I can give, give or take whipped cream. It's Cool Whip, all, all, which is, as I know, just basically whipped cream, but it's not in a canister. Yeah. It's spreadable, and it's a brand name. Mm -hmm. That I can tolerate when it's on a moist jello cake. It's about the only time okay. I like it. Otherwise, it's just like, I'd rather have ice cream. <laughs> than this like i don't like it on milkshakes it's like i just want to get to the milkshake i don't want this whipped cream on milkshake. it's fine i don't it's, mind it's, it's just too much nothing for me if that makes sense hmm. no. anyway um i'm like this pudding and ice cream go together should i be eating pudding and ice cream oh, is, okay. is it one of those things where like pudding is typically like a certain flavor in japan that we don't really i just like... think their pudding's different yeah there it looks to be a lot more like gelatinous flavor. yeah um, I mean, like the, the the pudding that we're most familiar with is like snack packs, and I'm pretty sure there are two different types of puddings. So yeah, well, my my parents would, like make pudding. Pudding was my go-to. Like my stomach is upset and I can't like eat very much because it's just easy to get down. Mm -hmm. That are like saltines. Yeah, but, I always thought saltines. But like pudding is like my. I don't feel that sick, but I need to eat something. And, like, my dad would make me chocolate pudding. And that's, when you make it from, like, the little boxes, mm -hmm. that's more, like, gelatinous, jello-y sort yeah. of stuff. Um, then snack pack is a lot more, like, runny. Runny is still the wrong word, but compared to jello, it's runny. That's true. Um, it's just they're pudding with a lot more firm. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't know what it is, but what I yeah, know. what flavor is it? Is it more like a like it's just like a savory thing, or is it actually chocolate? I don't know. Yeah, who knows? But it's a like, is, is that we'll never know. <laughs> okay, but they uh, Nagatora's like, okay, well that's fine. We'll eat your pudding, but we're gonna eat in my room, and you won't bother us. Yes, and then Nagatoro is like. Oh, I'll reward Senpai for coming and I'll tease him slash say it's a reward for him coming to see me and I'll spoon feed him some pudding. Uh, and then right as she's doing it is when the sister walks in and is like, I brought drinks, especially since the two of you alone. Which... You guys probably got thirsty. <laughs> yeah. Hint, hint. <laughs> wink, wink. wink. <laughs> um, I don't know what you mean. They're like, get out of here. She's like, okay, I'm leaving. And then they start playing the fighting game that they played in season one together. Mm-hmm. And, um... Nagatora wins. Yeah. Oh, and another thing is that uh, the sister was, like, telling him that Senpai was interested in uh, her in various oh, ways. Because right. like, she was like, do you want to know more about her? And he's like, uh, I guess... <laughs> Um, is like so. It's like if you beat me in this game, I'll I'll reveal one of my secrets, and then talk about what we talked about earlier. What do you want to know? My my cup size, my waist size, and he's like, I want to know your name. And she's like, Oh. And then Radwimp started playing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, Anytime I hear your name, I just start seeing wet Radwimps. Okay, go. I can't. I'm not, I'm not going to do it on mic. We're going to get demonetized. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we would. Uh, I don't know the words. It's in Japanese. But uh, he ends up winning mm-hmm. due to them like not paying attention it's to like the game and it comes out. out. Yeah. Um, and she's like, I guess I'll reveal it. And he's like, no, wait. It doesn't feel right. Like when I should just ask you. Yeah. You know, if I wanted to know, I should just came up and asked you like a respectable person instead like an of an adult, in, instead of putting it on a bed. It doesn't feel right otherwise. Mm-hmm. And then the sister bursts in again and uses her name. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, he knows it now. Good deal. That's and it. yeah, that's, he leaves. That's the end. Um, there's an after credit scene where she's like. You want to draw me like your Japanese high school girl again? He's like, okay, I guess. And she does like a Bruce, a Bruce Lee, Lee kick. Hitman Lee kick. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and after a while, she's like, um, this is probably a bad idea. I can't move and I'm about to fall. <laughs> and he dives into the, the blocker blow. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing that we get before it goes to the preview is we hear him sneeze in the preview. Mm-hmm. He gets sick. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen next? Somebody I do. Out in the rain. I read the manga. <laughs> or possibly visited a girl when she was still recovering and got the disease from her. Nah, it's definitely the rain. It's always the rain. Yeah, despite the fact there's no rain in this episode, it must have happened in between scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, it, was, it, just, it was a freak storm. It was like five seconds, but that's just enough to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's dangerous to live in Japan. <laughs> the rain is out to get you. Okay. I think we're talking about Nagatoro enough. We yeah, we're like 50 it? minutes. We still have four shows to cover, so uh, we're going to ah, kind of I'm gonna cover. I want to cover some of them a little quick, I think. Um, Next one is the ice guy and his cool female colleague. Am I right in thinking that this is your most anticipated one from what we've watched? Oh, yeah. This show's great. I love this one. <laughs> It's very um, cute. Yeah. And sort of just like a... I would say it's a more of a grounded romance, which is oh, it's just these people sort of like... It's like... Just, you... ha- they have to spend time together because they work, and they're just intrigued by each other. Yeah. And attraction is growing between both of them. Yeah. And that's, that's it. Um, oh, wait. I forgot to mention. This guy has ice powers. Yeah, his ancestor <laughs> fucked a snow woman, <laughs> which is He's not the s- not the same as a snowman in our culture, but a like a spirit or monster called a Yuki Ona, which will come up in one of the shows that I've watched. Okay, um, but they have like there's like stories of 
either like ice people show a, a woman showing up in white when somebody's freezing to death or like asking them to like hold their baby but then the baby just gets colder and colder and heavier and heavier um I was looking it up because okay. I was like, there's two shows that mention them. And it's just like, okay, there's just, they're just like ice spirits, okay. sort of. But yeah, he's the descendant of an ice spirit and he has ice powers. Yeah. Which he really can't control, especially when he gets Yeah, like... I would say it's more like, the. I wouldn't say powers so much as if he doesn't okay. keep a tamper on his emotions, it it's... can cause, it can cause him to freeze up if he's nervous or like snow flurries if he's excited. Yeah. And if he's like exposed to the heat too much, he'll turn into a little boy. He'll that melt into a little crazy. boy. <laughs> he's out in the sun too much. He turns into a little boy. Yeah. We and also she likes it. We meet a few. They and they work together. Is yes. how they meet. Well, they meet on their way on their first day on the job, and it's like, oh, that's well, what an interesting person. And, and they... the colleague is just sort of like, I'm just sort of detached. Like, I, I guess I, like, had friends, but I wasn't really close to them because I just wasn't very passionate. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling that she might have, like, she might be, like, on the autism spectrum at some point. Uh, Maybe. It's just she's very distant. She, she yeah, doesn't seem but to I be think very... it's it's not like a she's distant because she made a deliberate choice. She's yeah. distant because she just doesn't no, have the ability uh, yeah. to do that. Which I think can be a symptom of, of some forms of autism. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just like speculating that this might be what? something that um, people with autism could relate to. It's like, oh yeah, I know that feeling. This, this character might not technically be it, but they're coded as it. Okay. Um, but that's that's her thing. That's why she's the cool female colleague. Because she keeps her cool. Yeah. Um, and he's the ice guy. He's because the ice he, guy. He he should really be fined. He is a hazard to their work environment. <laughs> it just causes well, there's, like, there's okay. so there's there's got to be so much water damage in that office from melting snow. Yeah, so you're like, well, how is this not doing damage to the computers? And just okay, maybe it's just like a visual thing. It doesn't really melt or something. But then it's like he's in an igloo. It's just like how is this not melting or anything? <laughs> it's like how is th- there is physical snow here. People are commenting on the fact that, like, oh, yeah, ice and snow and wind are blowing everything around. It's like, I, I get that, like, you know, he he can't control it. But, like, you got to, like, make accommodations for his disability, man. Like, put a put him in a work environment where he can't harm the documents that he's working on. I say start a snow cone uh, <laughs> shop. It's like free ice. You just make it yourself. All you need is to buy the syrup and like a location. Yeah, you know most of the costs for a snow cone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ice being the cheapest part of it as is. But the cheapest part is free, so you know you just have all the other things of running a business to worry about. Yeah, that, that's what he should be doing. Just snow cones. Boom, got it. Yeah. But no, he works in an office where he's just causing havoc all over the place because yeah. he has a crush on his colleague. But I like it. Yeah. It's sweet. It's sweet. It's a little weird, but I like it. There's another girl who is uh, a fox spirit. Mm -hmm. And then there's another guy who's just a normal dude. Who's hot. Yeah. I could not. They said his name once. And I was looking for the second instance of his name and never found it. So I don't have his name written down. I have the other people's names written down. There's Komori, who's the fox lady. Okay. Fuyutsuki is the cool female colleague. Yep. And Himaru is the ice guy. Ice guy. He's also got a sister. I didn't catch her name. No. Um, and they have a boss who looks like he's descended from the great Buddha statue. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. other than that, everybody's just normal. And they're like, oh, yeah. It's just them, like, getting to know each other and giving them each other gifts. Them. Worrying about what he should do next. Yeah. It's like, he's like, I should take her out to dinner. It's like, oh, what what type of, it's like, of these types, and he lists off like 16 different cuisines. Which ones are your favorites? It's like, I don't have a favorite. It's like, okay, that makes it harder. Uh, but they do acknowledge that as a date, which is something. It's mm-hmm. like, okay. Um, I just she's wrote, got a cat. 
Nyamaru or something like that is yeah. his name. Nyamaru. And he likes cats, but he like can't be near them because he'll freeze them. <laughs> he'll get excited and freeze them to death. <laughs> so she's like, here's some cat whiskers. And he's like, I'll keep these forever in a box. And it's I'll weird. Just constantly look at them and touch them. It's, this guy's a little bit of a freak. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah, a little bit of a freak. Are we done with the ice guy and his cool female colleague? Yeah. Okay. The next show we watch together is called Buddy Daddies. Buddy Daddies. Two assassins uh, on a job run into a little girl that almost ruins their plans. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, But they are able to... She's looking for her papa. Yes. Um, and then she is... In order to complete their job, he's just like, uh, kid, you should come to me because I'm, I'm your, your papa. papa. Get her out of the way. One of the guys is just like, I've got a shot through the kid. And the other guy's like, don't shoot him through the kid. You're not me. Then they learn from like the letter she had on him that the guy they assassinated is the her actual papa. And they're like, okay. <laughs> uh, we got to figure out where this girl goes. <laughs> Find yeah. her mom. And they start taking care of her. Yeah, so they start taking care of her. And then in episode three, the one we just watched today, mm-hmm. they find her mom. And um, she's like, I don't want the kid. I don't and they're like, like All right, whatever. I guess the kid's ours now. And mm-hmm. they both sort of like are fine with that yeah. at this point. Um, but no, they're, they're assassins. They're trying to do their job. At, at, one, point at, she, kids, at one point, she's playing with a adults. real gun. <laughs> Cause she, they're, they're terrible parents. Yes, they which are. I get is the the point. But you don't leave a four year old alone with a bunch of snacks and be like, okay, now we can go to our assassin job. Yes. You yes. also don't bring a four year old to your assassin job. <laughs> like, to find be, a babysitter. To be fair, that guy was not specifically in there to assassinate the guy. He was just trying to like set up the trap. And then things went wrong. Oh yes. Yeah, it's like the guy in the house is just trying to set up the trap, and the guy outside was supposed to assassinate him as soon as he walked out. But, yeah. but the kid was like, I gotta go pee, and the guy was like, nope, you gotta stay in the van, and then she eventually rang the doorbell, and the mafioso guy is like, I guess I'll take this little girl and go pee, because she yeah. just rang the doorbell and said potty, and she was doing the potty dance. And then it's like... Uh, she sees him. Yeah, she sees him like, Papa, and the guy's like, Wait, what are you doing here? What are you doing without your escort? Uh, Not not so much like, he's not mad that that's his daughter. He's mad because he found him in a place he wasn't supposed to be without his escort. And then shit kicks off. The assassin job fails, but there's some other assassin who's coming to town that finishes it later. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that's going to come into play later. Oh, yeah. uh, That's that's it. We've got Miri is the daughter. Mm -hmm. Kazuki is the one who said that she's her... Yeah, um, he's the cool guy, the yeah. talker. Yeah, he's the the, the planner, the ladies' man, the planner, the sociable person. Yeah. We also learn that like he's got some sort of history that involves a wife and a, a pregnant wife. Who knows yeah. what exactly happened there? But like, neither yeah. him, he doesn't have a daughter or a wife right now, or at least he's not with them. So mm-hmm. they might be dead because of something he did or they he might have abandoned yeah. them because of his lifestyle or like she kicked him out something like that something, something i feel like in the latest episode we got a quick flashback to some traumatic event yeah that might be you know they got killed is what my current theory is yeah well that might have been his like parents too i don't know, I don't know. um and then we have ray who's got black hair and he's a just quiet sort of, shut in who's yeah he's a good at shooting yeah, he's very good at shooting, but otherwise he's just quite shut in. Yeah. And he's got some trauma with his dad. So yeah. uh, he's like, uh, neither of them. <laughs> There's some questionable things when they're like, don't call me Papa in public. And then a, like, not a police officer, but like a child safety commission, like neighborhood watch person is like, yeah. uh, is that your is that your dad? Is that your dad? And then pointing to Ray, and she's like, nope. And then, is that your dad? And Kazuki, and Kazuki's like, oh, yeah, I see you found my daughter. And he's like, is that your dad? And she's like, no. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, you told me not to call you Papa in public. He's like, it's okay for you to call me Papa now. And it's like, oh, okay. And he's like, see, you heard her. She said I was a Papa. He's like, I, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I think I should have looked into it better, because mm-hmm. uh, they're not. 
we should point out, like at the very beginning of the show, it's like they're good parents now, kind of, because she's like at the babysitter or something. Yeah, yeah. But then they're, they're flashback. Yeah, the, yeah. They, we see an assassination job. That's the two of them, and then they get a call from their babysitter, and they're like, um, "Why did you tell me she was sick? <laughs> I didn't know she was sick. Well, was she like wrong? Like was she sick when you brought dropped her off? She might have had a sniffle." You didn't even tell me. Yeah. So like we 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 see the flash forward. They've been cut better, but it's just like, come on. You try to, they left a child. They try. They left a child alone once. Yes. And the child found a, a gun. It wasn't loaded, thankfully. She found a gun because she was exploring the apartment and was playing with things. Mm-hmm. And then the second time, she's like, "Don't leave me alone!" And she's screaming not to be leave. And a neighbor is like, um, uh, "What's going on here? Are you leaving a child, a four year old child, alone in your apartment?" No. So they had to bring her along, and then she almost gets killed. <laughs> Twice. But whatever. I like it. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Um, I guess I don't have any notes for the other two shows, so I'll just talk about them as yeah. quick as I can here. Um, I'm watching the second season of The Misfitted Demon King Academy, which is whatever. It, 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 hits, it hits the ground running right away. I'll give it that. But it's just like the show is so convoluted with their magic system, and it's okay. just like if you break the like one of the guys is fighting somebody, and he like tricks him into um, breaking part of his shield. Like he's got like these four like glass orbs on his shield, and it's like, haha, I tricked you! If you break one of these um, break one of these bubbles, it will automatically. Um, like destroy your source which is basically like their soul yeah um so that you can't be resurrected because there's resurrection magic as well um and the guy's like oh is that it and then he breaks like all all the rest of them it's like well how did you get back up from losing your soul the first time he's like well you weren't there in season one you chose the wrong opponent because i'm the guy who's got seven souls in him and so long as i have one of them i can regenerate the other ones it's like, what? what? I forgot about that. <laughs> I don't know any of these characters' names. They're just like, this guy's like, I'm your new teacher. Also, I'm from the land of the gods. Also, I'm going to try to kill this student that says he's the demon king. And then when the demon king beats him, he's like, okay, I guess I'll continue being your teacher. And like, why are you letting him continue to work here as a teacher? It's like, gods don't break promises. He promised somebody he'd be a teacher here. <laughs> What's going on? it's so convoluted right away and i don't remember much from the first season it's like okay whatever watch the first two episodes of it the third one's out we didn't i'll watch it later we didn't have time before recording this or we did have time but i decided yeah "Yeah." (laughs) let's just go ahead and get this recorded um and then the other show i'm watching this one is my most anticipated show this season is inspectors in slash specter season two which a brief summary of in, in slash Spectre is the main girl as a child um, is like chosen to be like the yokai and spirits and monsters goddess of wisdom. Um, so the uh, as part of that ceremony to become that she lost her one of her eyes and one of her legs. Um, so she's got a glass eye and a prosthetic leg. Which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm into it. But um, she then serves as slightly part detective, part mediator, part writer of fiction. Is how she describes her job. So like if, if there's a conflict between two spirits or if there's a conflict between a spirit and um, somebody in the human world... Um, you know, or there's like a murder case that's being caused by a, um, you know, like an evil spirit or something. Her job is to figure out what exactly is happening, um, and then get get it to stop, and kind of like explain it away. So like, she's like, most of my job is just writing lies that people can believe. Like, oh, okay, okay. this is not supernatural. This happened because of X, Y, and Z. Well, or, it was actually supernatural. Yeah, okay. it was actually supernatural. And, like, we get a, a, in season... Oh, and then we're also joined by her now boyfriend. Ooh. I would say reluctant. Spoilers. No, like, their boyfriend and girlfriend in, like, the first episode. But okay. we have flashbacks to them not being together. Uh, 
it's a her reluctant boyfriend like she wore him down um who is he's a human if that word can be used for him it's the closest word that can be used for him but like everybody in the monster world is fucking terrified of him um because he was part of part of his family were like doing like this weird experimentation thing so like his grandma or somebody fed him without him realizing it and a bunch of his other family members um the flesh of like a mermaid and another type of magical creature and one of the other type of magical creature which i can't remember has the power to see the future but it dies as soon as it sees the future and then the mermaid just has like an impeccable regeneration ability so like okay. all the other people that that ate that food straight up died mm-hmm. but he got the right combination of it that he can he can die to see the future and then come back to life and then it's just like so he uses it in combat to just be like yeah i can it's not just that i can see the future i can find the path to get to the future i want okay. by dying and coming back so like he can't you know, he can't lose and everybody's fucking terrified. It's like, that man is a monster that's eaten spirits and nobody wants anything to do with him. But they tolerate him because, like, but the goddess of wisdom sees something in him, so I guess we'll bear his presence. Okay. We'll but she's, she's the brains, he's the brawn of their okay their, their deal there. Um, and then the first episode of season two we get basically a summary of like, oh yeah, that's what happened to that guy. And that's how his powers work. And that's what happened to our goddess of wisdom. And that's like the first half. And then it's just like, oh yeah, the second half is like those characters like talking. First half is like three spirits Mm -hmm. talking about that. The second half is like, oh yeah, I beseeched our goddess of wisdom to help me out because there was, I haunt this apartment building and I typically watch movies with this lonely dude who doesn't know that I'm there, but like I think of him as a friend. (laughs) <laughs> um and then we we occasionally just hear like this loud thumping in the middle of the night and uh we think it might be something weird going on there and then there's stories of a like a, a haunted doll that was found there so we we called in the, the goddess of wisdom and and she figured it out it wasn't that there was a a haunted doll the manager made that up because he was keeping an exotic pet alligator up there so he made up the story to make people think it was haunted so that he wouldn't get arrested for having his exotic pet or whatnot. And the spirit's just like, yep, that's what happened. I feel safe now. And in the meantime, they're like, no, there was there was like a haunted protection spirit doll up there. And we took it and we're going to take care of it in the woods. And then we get to see a fight scene with mm-hmm. the with the boyfriend. Um but that's that's sort of the plot of the show. They're they're sort of detectives. Um, you know, the boyfriend has got his older sister, or maybe like an older cousin of his, like is like sickly, but also sort of possibly their main antagonist, orchestrating some bad events in the background. Um, which is definitely nefarious. Okay, are these spoilers? Yeah, for season one. So you wanted to cover this? Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, She's going to spoil it for I me? think as soon as that character shows up, you're like, there's something weird about this chick. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's it's good. It doesn't shy away from blood. Um, it's with adults instead of high schoolers. Though they're, I guess they're like college students or maybe, yeah. I think the boyfriend is a grad student and she's a little bit younger. Um, but uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend Inspector. I think we're. I want to cover it on the podcast. Season one, season two. Awesome spoil now. Hmm? We're gonna spoil. I think it was obvious we were gonna spoil uh, Inspector season two. So I can't get people too mad at me for spoiling Inspector season one. Okay. Well, I think that's it. That was all the shows we've watched. I mean, I'm watching some other shows, but they're more like still airing shows from last season. Oh, okay. Uh, Welcome to Demon School or Uma Coon season three or whatever. Like that's still just airing, mm-hmm. even though I got like caught up this season. But uh, I don't want to talk about it. It's whatever. 
okay well i think that'll do it for this episode then um thank you for listening you can follow us on twitter at anime underscore territory you can follow us all on your any podcast platform yeah we're there spotify google podcasts apple podcasts um and i think youtube same yes. name anime territory anime territory we got the cityscape picture yes because there's like one or two other anime territories on there yes uh i think that's it you got anything else uh no you can very rarely we stream on twitch yeah. i need to be i need to be getting back into that um i haven't played um gloomhaven in a while but i played gloomhaven with a friend of mine on there um otherwise you're now leaving the anime territory goodbye